Your Excellencies, Vice Rector, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm very glad to see you back after lunch and the sun is shining and we can continue our conference. And this is a very special event that uh, we are very pleased, those who are involved in this event, to see uh, colleagues coming and support that is provided in this room. We have a moment of opening Jean Manet Center of Excellence at the University of Latvia. This is the first Jean Manet Center of Excellence in our country. As we already have heard this morning from Professor Ina Steinbuka, who is head of the European Commission representation, in Latvia, that Jean Manet was not spending many years at school. But that is another story that we will be back to it. I would like to return and to say how it has happened that as a result, Jean Manet is a father, one of the fathers of European community at that time and European Union in our days. And he's often viewed as a chief architect of the European cool and steel community, which over time evolved into today's European Union. Jean Manet, as we know, addressed to the National Liberal Liberation Committee of the Free French Government, Algiers, 5th August 1943. There will be no peace in Europe if the states rebuild themselves on the basis of national sovereignty with its implication of prestige politics and economic protection. The countries of Europe are not strong enough individually to be able to guarantee prosperity and social development for their people. The states of Europe must therefore form a federation or a European entity that would make them into a common economic unit. A very short biography of Jean Manet that is taken from Jean Manet Association. Jean Manet born in 1888 and then as we already learned today he was sent to deal with Cognac and he was sent by his father to Canada. And the father advised him not to read much of books. So, because the books and many books will not bring knowledge, but the knowledge will be will be shared or should be shared among people. So he advised him to look out the window and talk to people. So Jean Manet made many business trips worldwide, traveling to Scandinavia, Russia, Egypt, the United States, and most importantly, to Canada, where he was exposed to the country's unique form of federalism. During the First World War, he worked tirelessly for promoting the economic cooperation between the UK, France, Italy, and the United States. And in 1919, he became the well-respected Deputy Secretary General of the League of Nations. But frustrated by the lack of institutional authority of the League. I would like to show you two pictures, Jean Manet in Canada. First of all, this is uh, this is a picture of the book. I'm really sorry we have uh, the light is even over so you don't you cannot see well. This book was uh, published recently in Canada by Professor Uglon from Toronto University. And another proof of Jean Manet in Canada at Niagara Falls. So, as a founding father of the European community, who was taken an example of federation 
in Canada and brought it to Europe. Jean Manet, of course, left quite, uh, quite a lot in our memories. And one of the programs of the European Union is called European Commission Jean Manet Program. The Jean Manet Program idea is to strengthen education and research in Europe and in the world. And in the pre-accession period to the European Union in our country, different Jean Manet grant schemes have been launched, and it was a starting point for an interdisciplinary approach to education, theoretical as well as applied research on the themes related to European integration. The program, the Jean Manet program, was helpful in the development of the human capital as an essential priority. Jean Manet program schemes were launched at the University of Latvia, at Stradinsch University, in Vidzimus University, and we have as well as grant at Turiba University. The Jean Manet Center of Excellence, as I said that this is the first in our country, has a specific title. This title is Eastern Partnership in a Global Environment, Sharing European Excellence in Interdisciplinary Research and Teaching. The title comes as a result of our pool of all the resources that we have at the university. The main objectives of the center is to increase expertise in interdisciplinary research and teaching on European integration, develop expert knowledge in EU external relations, to conduct joint research with partners in the EU neighboring countries, and establish a forum for debate and dialogue on European Union and Eastern Partnership, as well as to involved academia, policy makers, business community, and civil society. We hope to have, during the next years, conferences and publications and policy briefs and impact reports and position papers for policy makers. We plan to have design and implementation of new study courses, master and doctoral thesis, and networking of research. We have a certain uh, number of people, and when I said human capital and uh, uh, resources that are pulled together, first of all, this is about people. And the people that are involved in the Jean Manet Center of Excellence, you can see at this, as we call it, round table. From the University of Latvia, kindly agreed uh, to work in the Jean Manet Center of Excellence, professors, Professor Yuri Skrumich, who is Vice Rector for Academic Affairs, Janete Ozelinia, Professor in Political Science, uh, Yuri Gromovs, who is expert in legal issues and work with uh, uh, Eastern Partnership countries, Christina Dupati, who is a lawyer and expert in uh, legal issues. We have, as well as Dr. Raymond Smujniks, who is an expert and director of the Institute for Advanced Studies at the University of Latvia, with a focusing on, as well as issues connected to Eastern Partnership, but these uh, colleagues will talk later and will tell what are their expectations about the Jean Manet Center of Excellence. We also have Tom Rostex, who is assistant professor and uh, with, as well as we invited a specialist in social issues, Elias Mouzi, who is professor and uh, uh, will help us to implement the uh, center. We uh, wish to have a certain impact of our activities as enhanced and enlarged pool of experts in Latvia, Eastern Partnership countries and third countries. Uh, we, will, we plan to engage civil society, public officials and business communities, as well as to increase awareness of European Union and Eastern Partnership common interests and shared values. I would like to thank people that were helping us a lot, as well as institutional support we received to build to launch the Jean Manet Center of Excellence. First of all, it is the European Commission, DG Educational Culture. Many thanks to European uh, 
fund for regional development on behalf of the European Union. It was provided to the university and we had a chance to use it. Um, Mrs. Yevarachko, uh, Mr. Roman Sputans for writing the application and working on this very seriously. Mrs. Zane Zaybete also helping with the application and construction of the center. Mr. Jan Saprans for the same works, thank you very much. Professor Vita King, who is not with us today, but uh, she knows that we are opening the center. She was as well as helping with um, providing support for the application. Um, Ms. Denise Panamariova as well for making it visible uh, in the homepage. And special thanks to Professor Glant for his book on Jean Manet, as well as Dr. Berlin, about the information of the book and uh, contacts with Professor Ugland. Thank you very much. And at this point, I would like to pass the floor to our supporter, Vice Rector for the Research at the University of Latvia, Professor Indrikis Mojnex. Thank you. I would say that the <laughs> since we don't have any red ribbon to cut and to officially open and inaugurate the center, uh, I'd say, oh yeah, this is a, such a uh, center on nowadays life. Uh, they are mostly based not on some physical infrastructure, but mostly on apparently relationship between people, among people, and uh, networking. And uh, of course, we are very proud at the University of Latvia that uh, a new center of excellence on the European scale is being established here. We have had a number of centers of excellence in physics, in environment science, in biology, and so on and so on. But uh, this center of excellence, which is inaugurated today, tells us that also the social sciences, the research in this respect, have uh, uh, already reached a certain level of maturity and they are visible and compatible with the European level research and probably this uh, research will be also important and will contribute not only to the development here and not only to the Eastern partnerships but also to our partnerships in the whole European Union level. I'd say that um, the idea of Centre fits precisely, nicely, to the uh, strategies of the university's development because we are aiming at uh, developing towards full-fledged uh, research university which will be, his, uh, his ambition is to become one of the leading research universities in the Baltic region and we are aiming to interdisciplinary research and this research is very nicely also reflected in the theme of the center. Meanwhile, we are also uh, concentrating on the development of the doctoral studies and it's my huge pleasure to see that a number of doctoral students, in fact, uh, nearly 100 or something like this, uh, doctoral students are involved in, this, uh, in the preparation of this conference and I hope that they will also benefit from the activities of this center which, is, uh, which we are starting today. And uh, if you look at the programs where from the doctoral students come, they are coming from law, from business, from uh, environment science, from uh, regional development, programs. So you see, this is like the development in the European Union. The programs themselves probably are too small to be sustainable and to be capable to be uh, competitive in the always more and more demanding academic environment. But taking together and cooperating like according to the best ideas of Jean Monnet, the programs, 
the social science development and the University of Latvia will be more visible in the academic environment. It will be developing towards new research achievements and I'm sure that we shall be able to meet and to exchange ideas and uh, new projects in future thanks to the center which we are now starting today. All the best for your future work. Thank you. Thank you, and let me please introduce our panelists, colleagues that will have lead interventions as it is written in the program. Uh, all colleagues that are invited to this round table either come from Eastern Partnership countries of the European Union or have research in these areas. Professor Lasse Heininen, quite a lot of experience with Russia and other countries. Doctor and Director of the Advanced Institute, uh, Nils Muzhneks, working on these issues. Professor Juris Krumic, involving as well as in these uh, issues on the demographical side of the problems. Uh, our colleagues, uh, colleague uh, Tom Rostox, uh, Assistant Professor, having quite a lot of publications in this area. And our guest from Russia, in fact from Pskov, uh, Georgi Varlamov, uh, who is uh, responsible for Euro faculty at Pskov University. Pskov University, excuse me, or? Oh, sorry, Pskov Polytechnical Institute, but we use in uh, Latvia call all the institute universities, so it's... Uh, <laughs> our tradition, I would say, and uh, Professor Raman Petrov, who come to the conference from Ukraine and who is the president of the Ukrainian European Community Studies Association. Again, thank you very much, colleagues, for being with us at this moment at the round table. And I think that we will do the presentation maybe again clockwise. So last. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Tatiana. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to, to be one of the panelists here. Uh, particularly, I like that, that those who are coming from the eastern part of Europe, Finland is certainly that or is that or or is that so that like many of my country fellows would say that well Finland belong, belongs to the west of Europe or the western part of Europe but actually I think I, I, I will take that as a, as a uh, uh, interesting contribution to say that Finland is in between and this is very much what, what Finland is, is located in, in, in this kind of, of uh, geopolitical map or, or, or historical map or, or, or mental map so that it's not easy to understand Finland without understanding the, the eastern features which are inside there in the, in the country and in the society. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of integration per se. I, it's, it's more that I, I, I'm, I'm, I would like to talk about cooperation, uh, interrelations, interrelationships, uh, interdependence, and, and how, how by a dialogue how we can reach these states and, and, and even deepen them. And if then, in the end of the day, if there will be some integration, okay, fine. But I mean, to me, it's not the first goal in a way. It's 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 much. It's a bit later when you have reached already some other uh, positions there, and, and, and that that the actors really agree that there there is some benefit on on this. So by putting uh, the the the. The Eastern partnership of the EU and, and, and EU's relations with Russia into this context, 
I, 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 would, I would say that this has been a success story so far. I mean, it's, it's so much what you have came there and, and, and well, like I said in my presentation in the morning that, I mean, think about it, it's only 20 years ago when, when the, the Cold War ended. And, and uh, taking into consideration the, the starting point in a way. It's, 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 uh, it's uh, rather much what we have reached within uh, 20 years or so. So, uh, but of course, I mean, m much has to do, it's a long way to go. And, and if, when we are talking about the European Union, I mean, is there a real c common foreign and security policy by the Union? No, if you are honest, there is no. There is no any, any common energy policy by the Union, no. But I mean, maybe it was so that simply the, these were targets which we were put a bit too early as, as, as uh, the targets which we should implement now. Well, maybe goals, aims uh, that we are entering to, but, but not really take that so seriously that we are going to, to, to make that within uh, two or three years or, 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 or having very short time um, frame there. Uh, and, and, and of course, I mean, like Finland is, is partly guilty now. Finland was the other country together with the, the Netherlands that we didn't accept uh, Bulgaria and Romania uh, as a new members of the Schengen Treaty area. We said that they are not ready. Well, I, I don't know if they are ready or not, but I mean, I mean, uh, it, it is one example that that it's it's we are thinking that to, to gain something, some status is so important. We, we are not putting efforts uh, and thinking too much that, what, uh, that it is a process. And in a process you have to, to take, to have small steps before you are ready to, to make a manifestation or, or, or to, to, to really to enter some which, is, which can be called a status. So maybe we are taking that as a too big thing. But, but so often there has been some bad mistakes making, have, having too fast speed. But I mean, when I'm thinking the, the Eastern Partnership and, and cooperation with Russia, I don't, I don't, vote, I don't see any, any mistakes there. I mean, it has been going uh, slowly maybe, but it has been a process. We, we have had good things there, we have built confidence based on functional cooperation, and this is very much what Mitrani meant uh, by his uh, functionalism. So that, that, yes, it's very important to build confidence, but uh, here you need small steps. So uh, by, the, by that way, uh, yes, but, but I mean, a lot to do, and scholars, particularly social scientists, political scientists, other social scientists can do a lot. And, and for example, how this stability, what we have in, in, in Europe uh, and confidence, uh, how, how to maintain it, how to deepen it when you have globalization as a, as a, as a challenge or threat there, when you have uh, economic fiscal crisis, which is even a moral crisis. I would say that this is the, the, the worst part of this fiscal crisis, that if it will mean a moral crisis, then we are in a trouble. Well, maybe we are already in a trouble, but, but in a deeper trouble. And, and so, and then like, like but how, how to, to make that uh, stability to become into a peace or peaceful existence of, 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 of nations. And then of course we have to really to separate what is a negative peace and what is positive peace. Are we really building a positive peace here? Are, are these aspects building more, I mean, peace which is more positive peace, meaning win-win situation, for example, and meaning good things like poverty, I mean, that we are really taking seriously and we would like to solve that problem. And we are not only talking about uh, that, there, uh, that, that there is no war, but we are talking about that it's not enough, we need something more, we need a deeper cooperation. And, and, and maybe, maybe, I mean, Maybe we are in, a, in the right uh, track, but we should have patience and to go further. That's more or less my message. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, uh, 
I hesitate to use this microphone because I hate the acoustics in this room, uh, but I will try. Um, first of all, thank you very much to Professor Murawska for uh, inviting me, um, and congratulations on, on kind of the unveiling of the Jean Monnet Center. Um, as Professor Murawska said, I run a, a research institute in the Faculty of Social Sciences with a very strong interest um, in uh, Europe's relations with Russia and the Eastern Neighborhood. Um, before jumping into what is our interest in this whole uh, exercise, I want to apologize in advance. A little bit before four o'clock, uh, Tom Srostoks and I have to run to an important meeting on the national, on the state research programs, uh, where we have a, some deadlines for uh, reporting coming up very soon. So, a few minutes before, if we leave, it is not because we are not interested in this. Uh, but because we have a very important other commitment. Um, I think it's paradoxical uh, that this Jean Monnet Center is being created now uh, and that the topic of Russia and the Eastern Neighborhood is on the agenda. Uh, because I think it's difficult to find a time in the last, over the last 15 years when there's been less interest in the EU, uh, in Russia and the Eastern Neighborhood than right now. Uh, and. Uh, I think this whole uh, direction or vector of policy has fallen off the radar screen uh, with the emergence of the Euro crisis, uh, with the Arab Spring, um, and one very palpable uh, indicator of this is just recently we were preparing a very large consortium to do a research project under the framework programs on the Caucasus. And in all of the documents, until the very end, the Caucasus and security in the Caucasus was there. The Arab Spring came, and the topic was changed. Now it's Europe's relations with the Arab world, and no longer is Eastern Europe on the research map, at least in this call for proposals. So I think that's a, a sign that's indicative of the changing um, priorities uh, in Brussels and among member states as a whole. Um, and I think this loss of interest uh, derives not only from global and European events, but also from trends in the neighborhood. Um, if we look at the neighborhood, we see authoritarian backsliding in a number of countries. Uh, we saw the Russian-Georgian war, and it's very easy for Europe to dismiss Georgia now and say, oh no, you're not ready, you just had this war. Uh, we see the impasse, the political impasse in Moldova. Uh, and I think overall, the realization uh, within the European Union that uh, Europe's influence is extremely limited in Russia, uh, and not, to, not to even speak of, of the neighborhood. Um, and uh, I think that's a very tough, uh, a tough thing for many people to swallow, is this decline in influence. I think many people had many hopes that uh, the same kind of conditionality used with us could work in the neighborhood, and it's clear uh, that without a credible prospect of enlargement, conditionality doesn't really work at all. Um, and also the levers with Russia are much weaker than everybody thought. Uh, I think this is very unfortunate uh, because I think the Eastern neighborhood um, urgently requires European attention. Uh, and this is particularly the case in our closest neighbor, in Belarus, uh, where the post-Soviet economic model uh, is crumbling uh, and Lukashenko is trying frank, frantically to maneuver between uh, the European Union and Russia. Uh, I was there in late April when the crisis was beginning to unfold, and it was, it was very uh, visible, the devaluation, inflation, uh, immiseration, out-migration, uh, attempts to get credits from anybody who would give them, uh, which have not really uh, resulted in any, uh, any great successes, uh, kind of shifting repression versus uh, slight uh, liberalization to suit the imperatives of getting credits. Uh, and what surprises me in all of this is the total lack of policy attention in Latvia to Belarus. This is our neighbor. We have very strong economic interests there, uh, which are not often talked about publicly. And if migration continues, we will undoubtedly be a target country or a destination country or at least a transit country from Belarus. But you have almost no public discussion uh, of this in Latvia. Um, at the same time, Russia's room for maneuver um, has increased um, in the region as a whole. Uh, and this is partially related with uh, the beginning of the operation of Nord Stream. Um, 
and uh, my colleague already mentioned the, the importance of, of energy issues on, on, on the agenda between uh, Europe and Russia and, and the neighborhood. And I think uh, the opening of Nord Stream combined with plans to build a nuclear power station in Kaliningrad uh, will have a very, very strong influence on the success of the energy component of the EU's Baltic Sea strategy, on efforts to interconnect uh, uh, the countries around the Baltic Sea, both in terms of electricity and gas. Um, so we have, a, we have a very big game being played right now. Um, and Latvia is not really a player in this game. Uh, development cooperation or assistance to countries in the neighborhood uh, with the onset of the crisis was slashed to zero, or a, a, a small, uh, a few lats basically to, to retain the budget line. Um, Latvia also has not yet uh, implemented its plans to build an embassy in Moldova. If you don't have an embassy in what is ostensibly one of your primary target countries in the neighborhood policy, you are not a player. That means it's you're, you do not have eyes and ears on the ground. Uh, you are not participating in the kinds of discussions with European partners uh, to do things. So uh, basically we are not uh, diplomatic players in the eastern neighborhood, I would say, almost at all right now. Uh, interestingly, there's a lot of interest in both the academic community and in civil society, not to mention business, uh, <coughs> in this region of the world. Um, and I think that there will, uh, there's a lot of potential to develop cooperation and synergies among these other players while the state recovers and slowly regains interest and, and the funding lines are, 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 uh, are reestablished. Um, and in this context, I just wanted to mention a couple of things that we have done uh, over at the Faculty of Social Sciences uh, because I think that they point to areas uh, where we would love to cooperate uh, with, with colleagues in the big house, as we call this, uh, this part of the University of Latvia, because uh, the Faculty of Social Sciences is, is in a different building. Um, uh, ASPRI, which is the Advanced Social and Political Research Institute, which I run, um, has organized a, a fair amount of research on Russia, Latvian Russian relations, and, and the Eastern neighborhood. Uh, we started in 2006 uh, with a volume on, on Latvian Russian relations. Uh, 2008, we put out a book on Russian media portrayal of Latvia called Manufacturing Enemy Images. Um, in 2008, we put out uh, small works on Georgia and Moldova. Uh, this year, uh, we put out two books. One called The Geopolitics of History in Latvian-Russian Relations, which looks at, at how these issues of history are played out in between Latvia and Russia. And the other is Latvian-Russian Relations, Dynamics Since Latvia's Accession to the EU and NATO. Um, and these are available, full files on our, on our website, if you're interested. Um, we have a strong interest in continuing uh, this research, uh, but also in expanding teaching on this, uh, on this area of the world and on policy and, and, and developments there. We have uh, an interdisciplinary graduate seminar uh, on the post-Soviet space, on studying the post-Soviet space. Uh, we have more than, we had more than 40 graduate students from different departments involved in the seminar, and this year we have 22 new uh, doctoral students who applied, so we will continue our work uh, with, at the doctoral level. Um, we've organized a series of seminars together with the Embassy of France uh, <coughs> on Europe in the world, uh, and the last one was on the uh, European neighborhood policy. Um, and there's another one planned in cooperation um, with the Polish presidency of the EU on energy policy in early November. Um, we organized this last summer a uh, summer school for graduate students on the post-Soviet studies uh, with the Alexandri Institute of the University of Helsinki, uh, where we had graduate students from all over the region come in. Um, so we have uh, a, I think a lot of activities in this realm that I think could feed in very well to the work of the center. Um, what is my hope? My hope is that um, you will help us broaden our heretofore relatively narrow disciplinary approach and make it into a more interdisciplinary approach. Um, uh, we especially need help on the economics front, uh, and I think this is very important. Um, I think that uh, the center could also serve as a locus where networking with partners from the region, from Russia, from elsewhere in Europe could take place. Uh, but also I think that as Latvia's pres presidency of the European Union approaches in 2014, we will see what I would call Euro panic in Latvia. 
uh, where we realize the scale of this task and everybody all of a sudden will realize the necessity of linking up the different aspects of Latvia's elite at the state level, municipal level, business community, civil society, academics, um, and getting people to think together about what this presidency means and what uh, and how the first task, I think, is not to blow it completely, and the second task is to make something good come out of it. Uh, and it's clear that if anything, uh, if we have any strong interest in terms of uh, the external relations of the EU, it will be uh, with regard to the East. So I think it is a very timely, uh, although it's paradoxical that, that the Jean Monnet Center has been created now, I think it's a very timely thing and I hope that it can play a big role um, in generating interest and, and creating new networks in Latvia as we approach the presidency. Thank you, Neil. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, as already Professor Moravska said, uh, Jean Monnet Center of Excellence is a joint effort of staff and researchers coming from different faculties and institutes at our university. In the same time, I fully agree to Nils Muzhniks that uh, we have not to start from the zero. Actually, we are partners in different uh, uh, we are partner in different networks and in different uh, research projects going on, but we have to intensify uh, our, our activities and uh, participation in the activities of the center. That's a good, good reason for that. I would like to mention a few of them. Uh, in focus, we have uh, uh, Eastern Partnership and Russia. I would like to mention that uh, our university is a member of Euro-Asia University Network and our representatives participated in the last meeting in Almaty and before in Moscow and we have uh, very many contacts with the uh, universities uh, uh, on the east from, from Latvia. Uh, uh, good reason to, to start active collaboration with uh, Western and, and Eastern partners uh, was a Eurofaculty project uh, which ran from the beginning of 90s and uh, now is continuing as we heard in, in Pskov. Uh, it started as a joint effort between Vilnius, Riga, Tartu universities, uh, also later Kaliningrad Oblast and uh, institutions uh, join to those activities and uh, very good uh, network uh, of our mm, partners in the in the west and the north are to, uh, participated in this project and uh, professor Moravska already mentioned professor Vita King uh, she was very active in in your faculty project and uh, actually a few weeks ago there was a meeting uh, uh, of uh, Finnish and Estonian partners uh, and our colleague uh, Gunder Berzinc visited uh, Pskov a week ago and uh, uh, mm, uh, we hope that uh, this project uh, will successfully mm, develop in, in, in the future. Uh, then other uh, network very wide network including also Russian partners, partners from Belarus and Ukraine is uh, so-called Baltic University Network which is celebrating uh, 20th anniversary in the middle October uh, this year with the uh, uh, headquarters uh, in Uppsala, Uppsala University. Uh, then more than 10 years exist uh, Baltic Sea Region University Network at the beginning uh, with the uh, main institution, uh, Turku University, and then uh, Gary Hipponen is a uh, president of that uh, network, but currently actually our university is such leading uh, institution of that network, and then soon we are expecting, expecting uh, several meetings uh, going on in Riga or in, in other uh, institutions around the uh, Baltic uh, Baltic Sea. Uh, I would like to mention also 
Uh, the Baltic Sea Region Studies Network. Uh, it is a joint venture between uh, uh, Kaunas, Vitautas Magnus University, Tartu University, our university, Turku, Gdansk Universities, so the Third Hög School in, in Stockholm and, and Humboldt University in Berlin. Uh, we develop uh, uh, such a uh, uh, joint uh, Baltic Sea Region master degree uh, uh, program and are participating in different uh, research uh, activities and and projects. A week ago in this uh, in this room was uh, uh, opening uh, of Estonian Human Development Report, uh, but actually. This report also was developed uh, by researchers from three Baltic countries and uh, researchers from the uh, Baltic Sea region and the focus was not only uh, what, what happened during the last 20 years in three Baltic uh, countries but the comparisons were done uh, in the scope of uh, Baltic, Baltic Sea region and actually after this opening uh, uh, we discussed about uh, further steps, how to widen, uh, widen our research uh, activities and probably uh, we have to um, think and to, to work on, on monograph of uh, uh, developments in the uh, Baltic Sea region. Uh, different uh, specific uh, projects are also going on and I see here representatives from the uh, Embassy of France in, in Latvia. Uh, there is such project going on on health and demographic transition in the three Baltic countries, but uh, it's not all focused only on three Baltic countries, but uh, also uh, its neighborhood, including uh, Russia, Belarus, Poland, uh, Finland. Uh, and uh, that's not only a project uh, focused on such spe specific issues. Uh, our university is developing also uh, several uh, regional regional studies uh, programs. I already mentioned the Baltic Sea Region program, but now is under the way uh, program on Russia and Central and Eastern European uh, studies, uh, which is also such a, a joint effort of uh, several faculties from our university. I don't know, Professor Muravska mentioned or net, uh, not, but but uh, we have doctoral school on European integration and Baltic Sea region studies and professor is uh, head or director of that school. Uh, I guess that uh, we have to use uh, that school and, and our center uh, to organize uh, different maybe joint activities, joint meetings and, and to intensify our uh, our, our research in, in different uh, areas. So we just have to continue. That's a good, good point here, this opening of center to, to be more active. Thank you. Thank you. Tom? Uh, thank you, Professor Murawska. Um, I have, uh, I think, uh, two things to add uh, at the outset. Uh, the, the first thing is that I'm uh, very happy to be part of this project because I think it's uh, an invaluable opportunity uh, for uh, doing research and also developing area expertise in, uh, in Latvia about Eastern Partnership countries. Uh, but at the same time, uh, speaking after Nils, uh, I, I do realize that he covered pretty much uh, what, uh, what we've already done and actually what we plan to do. Um, so um, my, my remarks will be much shorter than, uh, than, than his. Um, but um, uh, I, I would like to stress a couple of things. 
I, I think it's very important that uh, we we build on on the work that we've uh, that we've already done, and uh, as Nils mentioned, and as is possible to uh, to see from the website of the institute, uh, the institute has accumulated uh, considerable knowledge uh, on Latvian-Russian relations, and uh, probably uh, it is worth uh, going a st uh, one step further and adding. Uh, few more works to those uh, 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 shorter uh, books that were published on, uh, on Georgia and Moldova a few years ago. And I do hope that this uh, Center of Excellence will um, be uh, such an opportunity. And um, uh, I think it, this uh, Center of Excellence comes at a, at a very important time because um, when we look at um, the, the tendencies in our foreign policy, then uh, on the one hand, uh, Eastern partnership countries are um, very important for Latvia, at least on the declaratory level, but at the same time, as Nils uh, mentioned, uh, not much has been going on. We haven't opened a, an embassy in Moldova, and our development cooperation budget has been reduced uh, uh, drastically, uh, but but at the same time, it, it doesn't mean that um, um, that nothing is happening, and that we should give up on uh, doing research on uh, on Eastern Partnership countries. Also, uh, the fact that uh, there is Arab Spring and uh, the other regions that are neighbors to European Union. Uh, that these regions look much more interesting and uh, dynamic, it, uh, it, does, it should not obscure the fact that um, uh, the Eastern uh, partnership countries are, uh, are very important, uh, uh, both in terms of uh, economic development and opportunities and uh, political developments in, in these countries. So we should uh, uh, try to accumulate expertise uh, in Latvia on these countries if we want to, to have uh, at least some kind of um, impact on EU's foreign policy in future because uh, there will be nothing without expertise uh, on these countries. Uh, also, uh, I, I think this opening this Jean Monnet uh, Center of Excellence uh, might be a good opportunity to uh, develop development of um, partnerships and uh, developing social contacts, uh, networks with uh, researchers and uh, uh, lecturers from Eastern partnership countries, and uh, that uh, these contacts might be not only useful in terms of immediate uh, gains but also in terms of uh, long-term contacts, because uh, since these countries are our neighbors, uh, uh, we'll meet uh, these people uh, quite frequently also in future, and uh, therefore building uh, contacts is quite important. And um, um, some, uh, some ideas uh, about uh, possible research focus uh, when it comes to Eastern Partnership, it could be there could be uh, comparative research about uh, uh, foreign policies of um, Baltic countries vis-à-vis -vis Eastern Partnership countries. Uh, there could be much more focus on Belarus, uh, and this uh, research should be done irrespective of uh, political developments, whether uh, Belarus is isolated or being uh, talked about as a potential partner. Uh, for European Union or uh, perhaps uh, uh, a partner in the uh, Russian, uh, Belarusian uh, uh, Federation. Uh, so uh, there is, I think there is uh, some untapped potential uh, in terms of research and in terms of area expertise and uh, I hope that this uh, Center of Excellence will uh, ha help uh, to um, uh, to bring uh, this uh, uh, potential to fruition. So I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to activities in this uh, center. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I would like to give a floor to our guests and uh, colleagues from partner universities. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, for inviting me here and uh, first of all I would like to congratulate uh, colleagues on establishing center here because it means that uh, we'll know each other better though it doesn't mean that we haven't had any experience cooperation experience I mean before earlier 
uh, uh, we had lots of projects uh, with the Baltic states and there are various instruments supported by the UN. For example, Estonia, Latvia, Russia program is one of them and actually now we are waiting for a new call and it means that there will be also possibilities for participation of universities, businesses and uh, various, uh, various participants in this program. So it means that there is cooperation going on. But uh, with this center, this uh, cooperation will become much wider. Uh, when we talk about Russia, we shouldn't forget that Russia is very big. And for some regions, and I'm from the Pskov region, such cooperation, I mean, with neighbor uh, states is extremely important. And in this respect, this center, uh, I do hope, uh, and its activities uh, will be very uh, interesting and uh, up to date and very important for, uh, for all the countries. So talking about our experience, the uh, Euro Faculty Project has already been mentioned today and I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, about the project tomorrow, but in any case uh, the decision has been taken to prolong the project for three more years and uh, the idea okay, so far is to uh, um, develop uh, uh, more cooperation in the Baltic Sea states, not only in Russia, not only in the Pskov region, but uh, in the whole Baltic Sea region. And in this respect, the center, the uh, expertise gained within the center will be also of uh, uh, great importance. And uh, <coughs> okay, what else? So, and as to those activities uh, which were partially mentioned, I do hope that our teachers, our researchers, our students uh, would also love to participate in them and uh, I do hope it will be very important and useful for all the parties involved and for all the countries. Okay, thank you. My name is Roman Petrov, and I, am, um, I represent Ukraine. I am um, Jean Monnet Chair and also Head of uh, the Center for, of Excellence uh, at uh, the Kyiv Magila Academy in Kyiv. So I'm quite privileged being a colleague and also a member of the same network as Professor Moravska. And by the way, I learned for the first time about uh, Professor against through the Jean Monnet network. And it was already said about the background of this network, but what I want to say, it's a quite a global network which unites academics and university lecturers from all over the world. There are chairs and centers in China, New Zealand, Australia, and uh, there are several thousand modules, courses being taught as uh, Jean, under Jean Monnet framework, several hundred um, chairs and only about a little bit more than 100 centers of excellence. So it really shows your achievement and uh, signifies success of academic excellence at the University of Latvia. My congratulations, uh, Professor. And um, um, again, as a person who, who came from um, uh, from Ukraine, it was quite interesting to um, uh, to feel and to observe this um, um, uh, academic discussions here, and especially what uh, also what as far as I know topic of uh, leading agenda of your center is going to be European neighborhood policy, and um, I've got impressions that of course. For, for Latvia, um, interest in Belarus and uh, Russia constitutes the leading um, spectacle and uh, focus uh, for your future activities. And it's logical, it's understandable. There, is, there was not too much about Ukraine and how countries like uh, of Eastern Partnership, because Russia does not belong to the Eastern Partnership, may play part uh, in it. And I believe uh, it should be on many reasons, not only in terms of research, 
Um, and uh, of course research is uh, something what should be done and there are so many interesting topics for further exploration. But for me as a university lecturer uh, from Ukraine, what I see and uh, would like to convey to you, uh, Latvia occupies quite a unique um, a niche in academic, uh, European academic market now, especially for Ukraine, and it shouldn't be over underestimated. Because, uh, especially in this time of uh, economic um, uh, crisis in many fields, especially in education, and I hope your center will um, assist and foster um, uh, better knowledge about Latvian research and academic environment among ca in countries like Ukraine and uh, other countries of the Eastern Partnership. Um, there are many opportunities for student exchanges, joint teaching and research which could be explored. And uh, Latvia is also quite a unique uh, country which inherited, uh, Ukraine and Latvia inherited common past but different present and maybe, maybe as, as we hope in Ukraine, um, um, same future. So it may lead to interesting uh, common projects and uh, um, I will do my best to promote uh, Latvian academic environment in my country and I see a good potential in it. So my congratulations, Professor. Thank you, colleagues, but in fact, we're, it's also our congratulations to you since you uh, yeah, gained the uh, grant and the Jean Manet Center of Excellence in Ukraine. How many centers of excellence do you have in these large countries, Ukraine? Uh, two. Two, two, yeah. So, yeah, uh, for the large countries, Ukraine, two excellence center and director of one of the center is with us today. So, really, congratulations for you. Uh, yes, the uh, Jean Monnet Center of Excellence that we established at the university uh, with this specific title that you have heard opinions how much still could be research in the Eastern Partnership uh, with a focus on it, as well as in the, when we thought about the center, we didn't want to miss uh, quite a lot of our networking, as Professor Krumich mentioned, already some of them, or many of them, but one is missing, and one country is particularly missing, that we have extremely good cooperation with center of European centers of excellence that are different from Jean Monnet, as well as Jean Monnet uh, centers of excellence and chairs, and that is Canada. And that's why, in fact, we this example not only to talk about the uh, well founding father of the European Union as Jean Manet was but also his travel to Canada and the idea of federalism that he brought back to Europe but Canada is the country that is one of our very good partners in terms of the in the network of Jean Manet uh, program of the European Union. We are very uh, glad uh, to say that we have cooperation with the Association for European Studies in Canada. We have cooperation with a number of universities in Ottawa and in Montreal and also in Halifax. Uh, so that uh, gives us an, an opportunity to increase our research. For example, we have researchers coming from Canada and doing research uh, on Latvia, but also on the cross-border cooperation that is one of the issues in the Eastern Partnership uh, program. So uh, the colleagues coming from Canada are uh, doing research on, for example, monetary issues. And then it's uh, very fruitful, I would say, for our cooperation to share the ideas and to share the common knowledge. So besides, definitely we have to strengthen our contacts uh, with Belarus ourselves. But that may be another story how we will do it. Uh, we are also pleased to have uh, interns from Canada 
uh, coming to the University of Latvia every year, and it's all in the framework of um, uh, programs supported by the uh, European Union. Uh, we have very good cooperation with uh, one of the programs, again, supported by the European Union, that is the study tour from Canada to Europe, as well as now we have already for the second year the uh, study tour supported by the European Union from uh, Europe to Canada when uh, students from 27 countries are traveling uh, and learning about uh, life research, economic matters in Canada and the other way around in Europe. So that's uh, our cooperation, that's why we see the European Eastern Partnership, I would say, in the global context, rather than only to go on the European dimension in this uh, subject. So that's so far for the introduction, if there is no uh, other comments for the moment from colleagues. I would like to, uh, I would say, pass the floor to the audience, and if there are any questions, remarks, um, something that you are interested about uh, our research, about our future activities, about the involvement of doctoral students in our activities, you're very welcome to ask a question to uh, us sitting here at this table. For me, it's for educators, it's interesting to know what's a strategy for Latvian University within the European educational research area. What's profile of your international students and what is your objective and what kind of students you want to attract? It's the first question and second on e-learning. Do you consider any plans or any maybe investments in developing e-learning, uh, especially within um, social sciences? Because maybe social sciences is a field where foreign students may uh, choose as a preference to come to Latvia. Uh, it's a recent, present uh, period. So, yeah, please. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, it's really important. Actually, a year ago, our uh, university uh, senate approved the strategy for our university until the year 2020. Actually, we have printed version and I would like uh, to give you and uh, if there is interest also to other colleagues because uh, both languages, Latvian and English, is used uh, in this printed uh, version. Uh, actually, if we talk about uh, study programs and research, then the accent is, is made uh, to the research and uh, more and more not only in our academic community at our university but also in Latvia in general we are talking about uh, so-called research university. Do we need one research university in Latvia or, or several or university network including regional institutions of higher education but uh, nevertheless our aim is uh, uh, to be a research university therefore the uh, focus and accent is made on uh, doctoral study programs and uh, master uh, master degree uh, study programs. Then uh, other uh, other issue which is uh, pointed out in our strategy is to develop uh, so-called uh, uh, study programs of excellence and uh, maybe this center of excellence is a good reason uh, to, to develop such programs at at least in the area of, of, of European studies and concerning your question of, of international uh, students, uh, practically in, in European studies master degree program, also in, in Baltic Sea region studies program, we have international students all the time and not only uh, regular students uh, coming from, and not only from, from uh, other countries, the outside 
outside Europe, like like uh, Canada or other parts. But we have also from Europe. Uh, our graduates are from from France, from UK, which are interested in say in Baltic Sea, uh, Baltic Sea region. But what is uh, maybe also important uh, that uh, many uh, mobility students, visiting students, are are are, are joining our regular students and taking courses in the European Studies program, in Baltic Sea uh, Region Studies program, and, and uh, uh, that's good uh, maybe input, and we are expecting such uh, good good results coming out from such di uh, discussions together. Uh, uh, concerning uh, e-learning, that's uh, also important issue, uh, but uh, if you look to the uh, trends, uh, so actually uh, part-time student, number of part-time students uh, is, is declining a little bit, not only in our university, but in that way in general. Uh, but uh, e-learning, e uh, virtual learning, uh, that's, uh, I think it is uh, one, one good way to, to, to develop and uh, uh, actually in, in all uh, 13 faculties we, we have so-called e-courses uh, developed and, and, and several study programs are uh, fully fully covered like uh, say in, in, in com computer science uh, so that's in, in brief yeah thank you thank you professor so let us continue, and I see that Lasse would like to add. Thank you. Uh, I was waiting for another round, knowing that it will come. So yes, congratulations for, for opening this, this new Center for Excellence. Uh, uh, congratulations to the, the Vice Rector, the, the Chairman, uh, Professor. It's excellent uh, to have this, but I mean, I was thinking that that to me it's, I mean, uh, University of Latvia has started this this work already many years ago, and and I, I have been uh, been uh, that lucky man to to have been invited here and have several lectures to the students of the Faculty of Economics, uh, students of the Faculty of uh, of Political Sciences, and so on. I mean, to me this is, okay, this is a new status now, but the work has been started much, much earlier. And again, like I said earlier, that's the most important thing. And then there will come some recognition and more recognitions and so on. But, but the, the most important thing is that, 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 that it's, it's, it, the, the process has been started with, with, with that content. We have a, in the, in, the, in the context of the Northern Research Forum, we have some kind of saying that uh, the most important thing is what is the content, the subject, but what is the structure and process, it matters. So in, in a way, here, here I, I see that it is exactly the right way to do these things. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to see new, new, um, uh, new interesting and exciting dialogues and, 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 and discussions here, here in, 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 in Riga. Uh, I would, I mean, I, I don't have a direct question, but I mean, I would, I would like to, to encourage to, that you are doing one thing, and, and actually, uh, uh, Tatiana mentioned that already that, that the, to, to have more this global perspective, and I, I think that it's very, very good to have there. And, and, and then, how, I mean, how really you, you can have involved, I mean, students involved in both in interdisciplinarity. Thing which is, has been so often mentioned in the academic community, but which has not been implemented that much yet. It's really something that we have to start the work to implement interdisciplinarity. And, and then, I mean, the, the students are the best. I mean, we have to educate them. I, I haven't had any education on that. It's, it's something that I have to start. I had to start to, to think about and find out what does it mean. And now I'm, I'm doing that together with my students. But without my, without my students, I would be very much alone there. 
And other thing is that that they, I mean, that you can have involved in 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 the, the students as early as possible in in discussions, dialogue where you have these different contexts and and, and scales. It's it's exactly what what we, we what we need here. I mean, that is an, the only way, how I see, to build a, a, a new kind of global leadership, and that's what we need. Thank you. If, if I may just add a few comments, because I have to run in a, a few minutes. Um, uh, this might sound a little harsh, but our strategy right now is survival. Uh, we have had very severe budget cuts, and if you are still standing now, uh, you might be knocked over by the next round of budget cuts. Uh, so it's very difficult to think in the long term when you're thinking about tomorrow. That's uh, my, my first point. Um, and then, especially in the context of we hear about potential drastic reforms in higher education, uh, which could destroy certain faculties that shall remain unnamed. <coughs> uh, so that, that is one point. Uh, regarding research and teaching, it is clear that there will be fewer and fewer people to teach. So we will have to do more and more research. Uh, because the number of students, if you look at the demographic projections in Latvia, it is, we, Latvians are becoming a, a dying breed, except in Ireland, Great Britain, and parts of Germany. Uh, we were surprised by the outcome of the, the pre preliminary results of the census. It turns out there are much fewer of us than we thought, and we're probably much older, too, on average, than we thought. Um, so this is changing the whole higher education game as well. Uh, which means that the logical thing to do would be to try to attract foreign students. Latvia has incredibly few foreign students. We are not a friendly place for foreign students. And part of that la lack of friendliness is our very often absurd language legislation. We are probably breaking the law right now by having this event in English. <laughs> Unless you've got a special permit from the State Language Center. <laughs> we are probably breaking the law. <clears throat> which is absurd in a globalized European education area where we want to interact with colleagues from abroad that the state would want to regulate. We have not been able to pass a law on higher education in several years, primarily because of the fear, if it is liberalized, the Russian language will make a strong comeback in higher education, thereby uh, resuscitating old uh, integration problems. So one, this old language legacy of ours is having a serious impact on our international networking and on our, our ability to attract foreign students and so on. And it's absurd, but it's, it's there. Um, so these are just a few reflections on, on your question and, and the context in which we are trying to operate. Yeah, thank you. I remember, Nils, you, you, were, you were Minister of Integration uh, a few years ago, but uh, that's, uh, you are right, really. That's, that's a problem, and uh, for, for local uh, students, according to the law on higher education institutions, we can offer 20% uh, courses in the official lang languages of, uh, of EU, and uh, actually, this globalized world uh, is attractive also from uh, our uh, pupils and, and students. Uh, say, in the Baltic Sea region program this year, we have several graduates who finished uh, uh, schools in UK, in United States. Uh, they, they can communicate, of course, both in Latvian and in, in English language, but uh, we have also graduates, uh, uh, Latvian citizens, uh, who could not, uh, who could not uh, communicate even in Latvian. Uh, for example, we have one uh, Latvian citizen, uh, he graduated uh, secondary school in Nepal, and uh, he is a student of our university. Currently, currently of course, uh, his uh, Latvian is much better, uh, but uh, anyway, so there was question uh, in what, what language we have to offer study courses, because according to the law, we could not offer courses in English for, for Latvian citizens. 
hundred percent, and and this situation, of course, will change. And talking about uh, uh, census uh, results, actually, so now now is discussion, and probably in October there will be a meeting of experts in the Ministry of Economy about preliminary census results, and it is clear that uh, formally we have uh, less citizen, less population than according the population registered data, but in the same time the world is changing and uh, many young people, uh, now are uh, students outside Latvia, uh, even according official criteria to be a long-term uh, migrant, uh, you have to be outside country more than one year, but, but students studying in other countries, uh, they f formally are considered as a long time, uh, long term migrants, but in the same time, once or twice a year, they are back. And according to our student register, we can see that uh, many of them are continuing studies at, at our university. So, from one side, so we are missing uh, our our our, mm, our our citizens and our our population, but uh, but in the same time, uh, we are keeping uh, contacts. Uh, with them in our globalized and uh, virtual uh, world, and uh, part of them, uh, I'm sure, they, they will uh, they will come back. Thank you. Uh, any comments at the moment? Just a yeah. brief, brief comment. Uh, this year, I had a meeting with uh, Professor Muravsky about possibility for Ukrainian students coming to Riga, and I was told that uh, some courses what are offered are there in English, but some courses must be taught in Latvian, and uh, foreign students should take courses in Latvian. So it doesn't help in attracting <laughs> Ukrainians. <laughs> Ukrainian students, well, maybe that's what in general what, what I've heard. So, um, yeah, it's a quite a problem. And at the same time, you hold quite a, a significant value, a European higher education diploma, which could be uh, promoted as a good value, good commodity in the countries of the Eastern Partnership. So, yeah, if I may add, well, it's not particular, it's a bit exaggerated. The foreign students that are coming to Latvia can study 100% in English, that was already said. But yeah, but, very yes, point. yes, of course, but we motivate them to take uh, classes in Latvia. And it's helpful when you live in a country to know the local language, right? Uh, so, uh, as about uh, education and our university position, we really try to promote uh, interdisciplinarity and to make it as international, as you're absolutely rightly saying, that our diploma is valued for people that are coming from Eastern Partnership countries. We had in our program, for example, European studies, a number of students from Georgia, from Azerbaijan. Now it was very interesting to see that people from from uh, Kazakhstan are coming to to study the University of Latvia. Not only European countries uh, are coming. I'm looking at our, uh, for example, student Javier from Spain this year. He started to study with us, which is very nice. But what is helping us to be more international? That is fantastic program of the European Union that is called Erasmus. And the number of students that are exchange students is increasing and increasing every year. And it's very nice to see them in our classes. The problem is, as we see it and discuss it, and I would like to add a little bit, that Erasmus students, they come from European countries, and now not only, but the problem is that they come from the particular disciplines to study particular disciplines. So what we are trying to do, thank you very much, colleagues, uh, what we are trying to do to make them Europeans. No, if I, if you, I'll, I'll try to explain what I mean. They are coming to study the particular disciplines, but they are not coming to study necessarily the European Union and the European integration and issues that related to European integration. We wish you good luck in your negotiations. <laughs> So what we see, for example, that such activities as um, research, 
on European dimensions, as uh, centers of excellence, as arts activities, <clears throat> they can really help uh, students also to learn about uh, not only countries they are coming to study, but also about the European Union, its programs and its aims, and that's why we think it is very important uh, the position, the principle, when we cooperate with Eastern Partnership countries on behalf of the European Union, we think and discuss common values and how can we, this, how can we share the common values, what we understand by common values and how can we share the common values. So we really need mechanism to develop and we very much hope that our center of excellence will add to the experience, to the expertise on the mechanism of sharing common values. Thank you. Um, I think you wanted to say something. Uh, yeah. No, actually, my comments were, uh, I wanted to say a few words when we you were discussing language problems, because we have actually similar situation when the language uh, of basic programs is Russian, and therefore it somehow limits possibilities. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, any colleagues' comments? Questions and remarks? So then, yeah, then there is a feeling uh, already of the, of the coffee coming to the hall. And uh, at that point, if there are some questions, so please we can share uh, our thoughts on the matter during the coffee break, but the coffee is coming and that is of course very important in the afternoon. And after the coffee break we will have a round table Latvia, Canada. Thank you.